ancient supervolcanoes through rocks right across Australia. And I just measured it. This is an image from Google Earth. It's about two and a half thousand miles, 2,300 miles across. This is a, a 2016 article, but I just found it. It's on Science Alert by David Neal. And it has to do with uh, what's taking place, in, what has taken place in Australia. Well, we already know that Australia has at least over 50 asteroid craters. And uh, now we're having uh, more information concerning the supervolcanoes. Now, we know that um, the ancient supervolcanoes in Australia, which scientists have discovered, had enough explosive power to fling rocks to the other side of the country. More than 2,253 kilometers away. Oh, I must have been using kilometers instead of miles. But I'm sure I wasn't. Anyway, I'm sorry. The research is helping us understand more about how this continent and its unique landscape once formed. As we know, most people live on the east and southeast and south. And as you can see from the map, most of Australia is basically desert. So the research is helping us understand what's happened to this continent and the uniqueness of its landscape. It's been uh, long known that the east coast of Australia is home to ancient supervolcanoes, and that's where most of the people live. But what was not clear until now was what kind of role they played in forming the country. And so to figure it out, the team from Curtin University in Western Australia analyzed the age and composition of geological material across the west side of the country. And their study revealed sand-sized zircon crystals that did not match up with any of the typical rock compo composition in Western Australia, but that did reflect the volcanic rock of the Whit Sundays area in Northeast Australia in terms of both age and geochemicals. In other words, they must have come from there. So that suggests that the giant volcanoes that were once dotted on the northeast coast belch rocks far and wide, including all the way to the other side of the country. Now, up until now, the local craters and solidified lava flows were all researchers had to go on when estimating the size of these ancient eruptions. The lead researcher, Milo Barham, said, such distal projection of a unique volcanic material population demonstrates that super eruptions were occurring in Eastern Australia approximately 106 million years ago during the breakup of the supercontinent Pangaea or Gondwana. 106 million years ago, based on analysis of the arrangement of land masses and atmospheric conditions at the time, it looks like the upper eruptions happened during the southern hemisphere's winter, when strong winds from the east would have helped to push the volcanic rock westward, according to Barham. Now, if the scientist's hypothesis is right, the super eruptions would have been tens to hundreds of times more powerful than any in recorded history. This is what Alice Clean for New Scientist reports. Were such an eruption to happen today in Queensland, it would be hard and it would be heard all the way over in Perth. Being able to get inside into the eruptions of this type of important uh, issues is uh, essential for the scientists, studying the changes that have happened to Earth's climate over time, an eruption that would have been powerful enough to blast these rocks thousands of kilometers would most likely have had a significant cooling effect as well. But the researchers will also help the team trace the evolution of different species and help scientists to predict when and if eruptions of this strength will happen again. Because it's not just ancient supervolcanoes that can toss material this far. The Iceland volcano, the Ijaf Jalak Jokul, that erupted in 2010, were much smaller, but are the most recent modern examples of how debris and ash can be blown across huge distances. Now, with the ash cloud spreading thousands of kilometers and disrupting air travel around the world, 
the biggest super eruption on record, meanwhile, came from the Toba volcano in Indonesia about 75,000 years ago. Isn't that a coincidence? Well, we know around that time, Yellowstone had her little, little burp around 70,000 years ago. Um, that, was, that was after the huge one. That was The last huge one was about 640,000 years ago. And if you see the video before this one, the, um, the one that says that they're uh, estimating that Yellowstone is two and a half times bigger than they thought, that it reaches all the way down to Mexico and all the way back up through Canada. Yellowstone is huge. And that perhaps explains why we had uh, such a coincidence with uh, dual quakes. For example, today in Colorado, the magnitude 4.5, that was downgraded from 5.3. And at the same time, we had a 3.3 magnitude in Yellowstone along the same fault line. And wow, what a coincidence. Because you wouldn't think that it, they would have anything to do with each other, but it seems that they do. So yeah, um, the biggest eruption, super eruption on record, meanwhile, came from Toba. The volcano erupted about 75,000 years ago. In that case, sand-sized particles were blown over 1,700 miles, that's 2,735 kilometers, about the distance from one end of Australia to the other. Um, a, a radius, not diameter, radius, as shown by ash layers found deep below the ocean. But the experts are divided on how much of an impact the blast had on the planet's climate. Peering back this far into history is not easy, they say. And the more data scientists have access to, the better they can piece together what exactly happened. Barham said, the incomplete nature of geological sequences means that recognizing these earth-shattering volcanic events is difficult in deeper geologic time, millions to billions of years ago. Now, this uh, article was originally um, is uh, on science alert and the, the research is being published at that time, they say, in 2016 in the uh, magazine, the journal Geology. So this is fascinating. The more we look, the more we find. And the huger the sizes get, it appears. If you'd like to join me on my Patreon account, you will hear content not covered by mainstream media. These riveting stories will be based on my research and I will state my opinions and give my personal insight on diverse and controversial subjects and world events, events not covered by mainstream media and not certainly on not supported by YouTube guidelines. So whatever I have on my Patreon, most of those will not be on my YouTube channel. Please consider becoming a member today. More of the, the most significant and important videos will be on my Patreon channel. Your support helps me to continue my research and keeps this YouTube channel alive. And we depend on your support, your generous charity, because we help economically challenged families here in Athens, Greece in Kapota, and we also help the young generation with university tuition and the community around our church. Thank you.